Hey there nation and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back into the episode of Cheap Shots, the series dedicated to showing you money-saving habits for the wargaming hobby. And on today's episode, we're going to show you how to cheaply and quickly paint up a kill team of Felgor Ravagers for Warhammer 40,000 kill team. As you can see on the tabletop here, this is exactly what your end result will look like by following the different tips, techniques, as well as materials that we suggest with our Cheapskate method, you can achieve a beautiful tabletop standard and only costing you $33.62 in order to do this way. That's assuming, of course, that you're purchasing everything for the very first time. Now, when you compare that from the materials you need to buy from Citadel as well as Army Painter, you're talking about a grand total savings of $196.08 being saved. So as you can see, these Felgor Ravagers are absolutely beautiful, one of the best sculpts that have come out for Games Workshop in a while, and I was really excited to actually get to it. So with that being said, let's go and show you guys how we quickly and cheaply paint up the uh, Felgor Ravagers for Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. Now, originally in the box set, there's only 10 of these guys in the box set. If you notice in the previous slide, I have 14 Beastmen instead of 10. And the reason why is because I've also included two Beastmen from the Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress box set, uh, just because I wanted to include those guys and paint them up with these uh, Felgo Ravagers. So as you can see here, I fully assembled the kill team to the unique specs that I wanted to. You can assemble any way that you want and then simply glue them on their bases. And once they're assembled, the next thing you do now is to texture the bases. So for my texturing technique, what I used to do is like to take wood glue and just put it directly onto the base. I paint it on kind of like a really thick paint. And then what I do is I dust the base with uh, a little bit of sand that I get from my backyard in my garden. And this is absolutely cheap. It's the earth made up of dirt. You can get plenty of this for absolutely for free. And at the same time, also creates a really cool looking base. Um, you could use modeling sand if you want to, but that's kind of expensive. Plus it's not as organic looking either with all the different granules of sand. Now, of course, you could decide to texture your bases with Astro Granite from Citadel. Uh, that's a wonderful product, as exactly as it's advertised. The only problem, though, is that the Astro Granite costs $7.80 per pot, while my method is pretty much free. Now, once you have this wood glue dried with the sand on top of it, the next thing you do, of course, is add a sealant to it to make sure that the texturing doesn't flake off the base. So for my next step for the sealant, what I do is I make a 50-50 mixture of wood glue as well as tap water, uh, basically make a slurry, and then I apply it like a wash all over the texturing on top of the base. What this does is that when it dries, it creates an airtight seal that keeps the uh, sand on the base and prevents it from flaking off, and at the same time has a really great finish for you to create your miniatures from. So now that we're done texturing the bases, next thing we do now is a primer. Now your primary miniatures, you could of course use Corax White Spray from Citadel. The only problem is that it costs $17 a can. Me, I use Rustillium Flat White Primer that I get my local Walmart for $3.99. I just do a quick once over real fast with the white primer. Priming does a couple of things. First of all, it gives a great surface for your acrylic paints to adhere to when they paint onto your miniature. If you're to paint directly onto bare plastic, it could ruin your finish because all that it needs to do is to take the slightest bit of friction and that paint will come clean off. The primer prevents that from happening by making the acrylics adhere to your miniature. At the same time, the primer also has a huge impact on the vibrancy of the colors that you have on your palette. Uh, white uh, paint uh, primers traditionally have a brighter, more vibrant uh, paint scheme, while using black primer would mute down your colors or have a darker paint scheme, while gray is a nice medium choice to use right in between. Now, I'm doing a quick paint method, meaning that I'm going to use a quick oil wash in order to do this, and that oil wash is going to mute down the vibrancy of my colors. So in order to make sure that doesn't have too much of a bad effect, I'm using really bright colors, and that's why I use a white primer. Now, once you're done priming your miniatures, the next thing you do, of course, is to do a base coat. In this situation, what I decided to use is four different colors to do the flesh of all the beastmen. I did this for a couple reasons. The first reason why I want to do that is because I'm a fan of a variety of colors when it comes to my miniatures. At the same time, I also want to create some variety between these skulls as well to make them all look a little bit different. Now the colors that I use of course were Flesh by Apple Barrel Paint, Nutmeg Brown by Apple Barrel Paint, as well as Burnt Umber from Apple Barrel. All three of those can be purchased at your local Walmart for about 50 cents.
cents, while the other uh, color I used was Anita's Acrylic Taupe Gray, which cost 65 cents at my local Hobby Lobby. Now, the corresponding colors from Citadel would be Cadian Flesh Tone, as well as Bugman's Glow. Uh, you also have Rackarth Flesh, as well as Wildwood. The Rackarth Flesh, as well as Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone would cost you $4.55, while Wildwood would cost you $7.80. As you can see right off the bat, these paints cost almost anywhere between nine to 10 times as much than the cheap alternatives I'm using from Walmart, but they do exactly the same thing. So put your two thin coats of uh, flesh on and you're ready to do our dry brush. So for the flesh for these guys, for the dry brushing, for the guys I painted in taupe gray, I dry brushed those guys in ivory. Uh, you can get this at your local Walmart for 50 cents. The uh, color that would correspond from Citadel would be Longbeard Gray, which costs $4.55. For the guys that I painted in flesh, you would have to use what's called De uh, Delta uh, Serum Coats Peaches and Cream, which costs you 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. The corresponding Citadel color would be Flayed One Flesh, which costs you $4.55. I then used flesh for the uh, ones I did in the Nutmeg Brown. You would have to use Canadian Flesh Tone for that, which costs $4.55. And for the ones that I painted in dark umber, burnt umber, I would use uh, Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel Paint. Cost me 50 cents at my local Walmart, as opposed to, I believe the color is called XV88, is what I believe it's called. I'm oh, sorry, not XV88. I do apologize. It's called Baylor Brown, which costs $4.55 for that. So just a quick, real quick dry brush on directly on the flesh. What dry brushing does, it creates the illusion of depth in your miniatures because the actual pigments of the dry brushing adheres to the raised surface of the miniature while the darker color remains in the recesses. So it creates a lot of highlight as well as shadow on your miniatures as well. If you also notice too, when you do a dry brush, you do have this very chalk kind of pastel finish on your miniatures that's just a side effect of doing dry brushing but do not stress out and the reason why is because when we do the oil wash the oil wash will smooth out those transitions and get rid of that chalky texture going on for all of your miniatures so the next detail we're going to work on now is all the tufts of fur that these characters are wearing at the same time. So now that we got the flesh taken care of, we got to take care of the manes as well as the fur that they have on their on their calves as well as on their thighs and on their shoulders and the back of their arms as well. And once again, I use a variety of color to do this in order to break up the color scheme between all the different types to add some color variety to the overall group. Uh, some of them I actually took out two thin layers of Peter Gray by Apple Barrel Paint that cost you 50 cents at local Walmart. The corresponding color would be Eschen Gray from uh, Citadel. Or that costs 455 for that. Once again, I'm using burnt umber again that we talked about earlier, as well as Anita's acrylic moccasin brown, which costs 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. The corresponding color for that would be XV88 from Games Workshop, which costs 455. And finally, for the ones whose mains are done in black, I use Apple Barrel Pavement uh, that costs 50 cents at my local Walmart, and the corresponding color would be Slanesh Gray. I'm uh, sorry, Eschen Gray, which costs 4 dollars 55 for that one. So what you're gonna do is look for all the tufts of fur that's all over these characters and to paint them accordingly. As you can see. I've also changed out the skin tone with the tuft of fur. Like, for example, I have one guy whose flesh is burnt umber that I painted with Peter Gray, while another guy is using Rackarth flesh. Uh, so you just kind of change up the variety of different colors between the different flesh types in order to create some wild diversity in your gang. Now for the next step, we're going to dry brush all the fur we just painted, and we're actually using one color to do all the dry brushing, and that color is Pale Gray by Folk Art. You can get this at your local Walmart for about 75 cents. The corresponding color from Games Workshop would be Ulthawan Gray, which costs you $4.55 for that product. And the reason why I use one color for all the dry brushing is for two reasons. The first reason why is because I was kind of lazy when I was painting these guys up, and I didn't really want to, have to go through individual colors for each of the fur when Pale Gray would just do the job for me, so that's one reason why I did it. And the second reason why, as well as because it contrasts nicely with the fur color already and it makes it look like it's kind of faded or kind of gray like these guys are a little bit older or they were walking around the ash waste of Necromunda for too long which is exactly what I use these guys for is for Necromunda not necessarily for kill team so once you're done with the quick dry brushing with the folk art we can move on to our next series of details and the next major detail we're going to work on are on the hooves as well as the horns of these beastmen. And as you can see, once again, I have a whole variety of colors that we choose. We're using Anita's Acrylics uh, Taupe Gray as well as Territorial Beige or Apple Barrel, Pavement for Apple Barrel, as well as Peter Gray for Apple Barrel. And then we're also using uh, Light Mocha from Apple Barrel, which costs 50 cents at your local Walmart. That Light Mocha, is, uh, if you want to use a color that's from Games Workshop, would be Bane Braid Brown. And that would cost you $4.55 for that one. And once again, I'm just kind of changing up the variety of colors. So for example, I have a guy who's got Taupe 
gray flesh with burnt umber fur as well as pavement colored horns at the same time another guy's got flesh uh, uh flesh colored uh flesh with like burnt umber uh fur and like beige horns so i just do this to kind of create the variety and create a wide variety of different colors for the horns as well as the hooves for these characters to make it a little bit more interesting looking as well as a side effect by doing this if you have any miniatures that are actually duplicates in a gang like this by doing this you actually create the illusion that each uh, you have multiple uh, sculpts instead of just like a duplication which kind of adds that illusion of variety in your miniatures so now that we've got the horns as well the hooves painted, the next thing we got to do, of course, is to do a dry brush. For the darker colors, I use pale gray, and for the lighter colors, I use ivory. And the reason why I use those two colors is because, once again, I was kind of lazy when I painted these guys up. Didn't want to use a lot of different paints in order to do the dry brushing, so I just went with whatever was easiest at the time. But either way, I did that, though, he has a beautiful end result, as you can see. It brings out a lot of those details, like the different ridges, as well as the texturing of the horn, while leaving that uh, darker color in the recesses of the miniature. So now that we're done with that, we're going to do a little bit of a sub assemblies with these paint jobs and focus on individual fighters for a little bit and the reason why is because of the variety of designs in these miniatures for example these four miniatures here are actually the beastmen from games workshops warm request blackstone fortress now the reason why i had to pick these guys out a little bit different is because unlike their other counterparts and the rest of the physical ravages these guys are actually wearing like trousers as well as like wrappings and cording around their wrists as well as their ankles so i had to pick those out in order to create that uh that those different colors now if you'll notice of uh, these guys i actually did a really simple kind of um uh, conversion work on these guys what i ended up doing is that i actually took the arms of the left hand arms of two of the miniatures and actually swapped them so if you look on the right hand side one guy's carrying two pistols one other guy's carrying two swords that actually be one each one carrying their own pistol as well as their own sword but then that quick real simple conversion to kind of create that illusion of variety in the miniatures as well now, when it came to their trousers, I painted them in four colors, which is Tuscan Teal, English Ivy Green, as well as Burt Umber. All three of those are from uh, Apple Barrel Paint, 50 cents per uh, pot. And then I use Folk Art Skyline, which costs 75 cents at local Hobby Lobby for the X guy as well. Now, if you wanted to use the actual corresponding colors from Citadel, you have to use Thunderhawk Blue for the teal color. For the English Ivy Green, you would have to use Vulcan Green. For the Skyline, you have to use Rust Gray, and for the Burt Umber, you have to use Wildwood. Now, the Games Workshop paints will cost $4.55 per pot, while the wild would cost you $7.80 for that one. So just put two thin layers on the fabric, and you're ready to move on to a dry brush. So for the dry brush on the trousers, for the two guys who had bluish colored pants, I used Folk Arts Dutch Aqua, which you can get at your local Hobby Lobby or Walmart for about 75 cents. The corresponding color from Games Workshop would be Athermatic Blue, which costs you $7.80 for that. For the guy with the brown trousers, I used Territorial Beige, which costs 50 cents. And then for the guy on the green trousers, I used Lime Sherbert by Apple Barrel Paint, which costs you 50 cents. The corresponding color for that would be Cyberite Green from uh, Citadel, which costs you $4.55 for that pot. Now the next main color we're going to focus on are all the fabric that these guys are wearing. Some of these guys are wearing sashes, some guys are wearing loincloths, they also have wrapping and cording around their hands, their arm forearms as well as their calves and their ankles. Some guys are wearing headdresses. Either way you look at it though, for all the fabric that we have, we're using one unifying color, which is Anita's True, Ac uh, True Acrylic in True Red. It's going to cost you 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. The corresponding color for that would be Mephiston Red from Games Workshop, which costs you four fifty-five. Now the reason why I decided to go with the red color was because originally that's the color that showed up on the box art when I actually looked at it and the second thing is it contrasts quite nicely with all the browns and uh, tans as well as the cream colors that we have for most of these guys as well this beastman herd is largely our earth tone colored and that red is a beautiful contrast when compared to that and it's a detail that really sticks out to you when you notice these guys and it's a really nice eye-catching color which looked absolutely fantastic so I just put two thin layers of this red paint on all the fabric parts and the next thing we need to do now is to dry brush that red fabric so the color you use to dry brush red fabric is Tropic Orange. It's made by Apple Barrel Paint. You can get this at your local wa uh, Walmart for about 50 cents. The color that you have to use from Citadel or from uh, would have to be Luganath Orange, which costs $4.55. I just do a quick dry brush with it real fast. When it ends up happening is the orange catches upon the raised surfaces of the miniatures and the fabric while the darker red stays in the recesses so that way you can see all the different folds and different cordings and layers of fabric that these guys are wearing. It looks really awesome as well. Now the next thing we're going to work on is some of the smaller details like the weapons casings of some of the auto pistols these guys are carrying, the chain swords that these guys are also carrying as well. Another thing we'll also be looking at is the leather goods that these guys are also wearing in terms of belts, satchels, uh, holsters, that sort of thing. So for the weapon casings, I use English Ivy Green for the auto pistols as well as pavement paint for the chain swords that these guys are carrying uh, to give it that kind of like tactical look like these guys pick these weapons off from maybe some old uh, Imperial Guardsman that they killed or something like that. As for the leather goods, I use uh, Khaki by 
Apple Barrel Paint. You can get this at your local Hobby Lobby, uh, Walmart for about 50 cents. Uh, the equivalent to that actually would be Xandri Dust, which costs you about 4.55 from your local uh, Games Workshop. I also use Territorial Beige as well as Burnt Umber for all the leather goods as well. And once again, I was just kind of going for colors that would contrast with whatever fur that these guys are carrying. For example, the leader in the front there, uh, he's got dark brown fur that I use Burnt Umber for. So because that, I use Khaki Paint for his leather goods, so that way it contrasts nicely against the darker colors of his fur. Uh, for another guy, for example, with the lighter uh, tones, like the more uh, cream colored skin or maybe the lighter colored fur, I would use Burnt Umber for that in order to contrast against that. So all you gotta do is put two thin layers on those details and we're ready again for some more detail work. Now, the next detail we picked out is all the frag grenades that these guys are carrying. These guys are covered head to toe with a bunch of frag grenades all over their gear. So to pick out those frag grenades, I put two thin layers of Holly Branch by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a nice, bright, vibrant green that contrasts really nice with all the earth tones these guys are carrying for their colors, for their fur and their flesh. At the same time, contrasts quite sharply with the red that they're wearing as well. It kind of brings, draws your eye directly towards that detail, which is really nice as well. Now the uh, Caliban Green would be the Citadel equivalent of this, which costs $4.55, which is about nine times as much as the Apple Barrel Paint version. So once you guys are done picking out those hand grenades, next thing you need to do now is do some dry brushing as well as some more detail work. All right, so the first thing of course we did is we used lime sherbet to dry brush the frag grenades that these guys are carrying, so that way you can see the individual like pattern of the fragmentation pieces of those weapons. We also use that dry brushing all the auto pistols these guys are carrying as well, so that way you can see those details on those weapon panels. For the chainsword these guys are carrying, I actually dry brushed the chainsword in pale gray as well as with gunmetal gray on the teeth. Uh, the reason why is because I was feeling lazy with the gunmetal uh, gray, so I didn't want to paint every individual tooth on those chainsaws. I just dry brushed them real quick, and I dry brushed the body of the weapon in pale gray as well, bring a lot of those details you couldn't see before, like the individual rivets as well as panels of all the different weapons that these guys are carrying. So once again, we're going to break these guys down into individual uh, smaller sections, and that's so that way we can focus on the individual detail of these characters. For example, the uh, one of the uh, two of the characters you see there, one guy with the, uh, carrying a uh, cybernetic arm, as well as the guy carrying the grass grenade. I actually use Kiwi by Apple Barrel Paint, which is actually a really, really bright green, almost a neon yellow, and it costs 50 cents at my local Walmart. But you have to use Moot Green from Games Workshop, which costs 4.55. I did that in order to pick up the detail of the cabling along the cybernetic arm for the guy on the left hand side as well as for the lenses of the gas mask wielding guy who's right there in the center as well. At the same time, I also paid the smoke coming off his gas grenade in Dutch Aqua, and as for the plasma coils on the plasma pistol of the leader, I decided to use two thin coats of Delta Saren Coats Mermaid Blue, which cost 65 cents at my local Hobby Lobby, and the equivalent from Games Workshop would be Talazar Blue, which costs $7.80. And I just did that because I thought it'd be a nice little detail to pick out on the plasma coil on the pistol. So going back to the Philgo Ravagers carrying the grass grenade, I painted his smoke earlier with uh, Dutch Aqua. Looking back, I should have probably just left it alone because that Dutch Aqua was actually a really nice color, but I decided to glaze it at the time using Holly Branch uh, from Apple Pearl Paint. All you gotta do is water down your paint with some water uh, to the basically consistency of ink and just paint it on in successive layers. Unfortunately, after I got done doing the Holly Branch, I realized looking at that I made it too green and I really wanted that Dutch Aqua look instead, but eh, c'est la vie. So continuing with our sub-assemblies, we have these four uh, Felgor as well. And the reason why I picked these guys out is because of the belly plates that these guys are wearing. Uh, you can kind of see it for the guys on the left-hand side as well as the right-hand side as well as the guy carrying the gong. But these guys actually have these huge circular round belly plates, kind of like, uh, uh, what you call it, kind of like uh, Ogre Kingdom characters have as well. Now to create those belly plates, I decided to create what I like to call my patented graveyard steel uh, colors, what I like to call it. What I like to do is I like to take a 50-50 mixture of folk arts copper as well as folk arts gum metal gray and I mix it in a 50-50 mixture between the both of them and it creates this kind of rusty kind of metal look without having to try too hard in order to achieve that color. It's a color I use quite a bit in my undead uh, paint tutorials as well as some of my like scavies that I've actually done from Nicomunda as well and then I just put that directly onto the belly plates as well as the giant gong that this guy is ringing as well and uh, it comes out a beautiful color. Now if you want to use exactly the same colors from Games Workshop you'd have to use Screaming Bell which costs $7.80 as well as Lead Belcher, which costs $7.80 as well. Both the Copper from Folk Art, as well as the Gunmetal Gray, both cost $0.75 cents at my local Walmart. Just put two thin layers on that kind of rusty kind of metal, and it looks absolutely fantastic when it dries. 
So now that we're done with those guys with their belly plates, the next thing we're gonna do now is to dry brush the uh, graveyard steel that that graveyard steel color that I created using the copper and the and the gunmetal gray by dry brushing with some anniversary silver by Folk Art. This costs you 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby uh, or Walmart. The equivalent to this from Games Workshop would be Iron Breaker, and as you can see, it does a beautiful job of creating like this kind of like rusted kind of weathered look on the. Especially you can see it really good on the gong, so it looks really awesome as well. And I love using that color for whenever I gotta create rusted looking metal. And the last little detail is on the gong bearer himself. I just dry brushed it real quick with some Dutch aqua to create this kind of oxidized, kind of rusted look on his uh, on his giant gong that he's ringing just because I thought it looked cool at the time. And uh, once you get done with that dry brushing, you're pretty much done with all of the uh, belly plate guys as well as the gong ringer. The last character we're going to focus on is the Psyker that's actually in the middle of the group as well. And the reason why is because he's got this little totem staff that he's carrying. It's got a skull on the top of it. So we're going to put that on two thin layers of light mocha. And as for the fabric that's hanging off his little totem staff, we're going to put that on two thin layers of folk art as well. We're just going to do real quick base coats on that, and then we're ready to move on with our last detail. So now that we're done with those details on the skull staff, next thing we need to do now is work on all the metallic elements. So once again, we're now going to pick up all the metallic elements as well. We already talked about using copper as well as folk art anniversary silver as well as gunmetal gray to pick out some of the details that we saw earlier. Other things we're also going to use as well is for all of our gold elements, we're going to use De uh, we're going to use Deco Arts Emperor's Gold, which costs us seventy five cents. The Games Workshop equivalent to this would be em uh, Retribute Armor, which costs seven dollars eighty cents for that. And for all the parts that we want to have done in kind of like a brass color, we're going to use Anita's Acrylic Antique Copper, which costs sixty five cents. The color coordinating to that would be Brass Scorpion by Games workshop which costs seven dollars eighty cents for that and what you're doing in this situation is picking out all the different metallic elements based on whatever colors that you want um in the end i decided not to be lazy and actually decided to pick out the teeth on the uh, chain swords as you can see in this photo as well at the same time i also painted like the little gold emblems along the length of the blades as well as some of the chaos stars and other jewelry that these guys are wearing uh things like the little uh, barbs and the whip and the guy in the background for example uh painting the barrels the magazines of the guns the pins of the grenades um all kinds of metallic elements you have bits of chainmail that these guys are wearing and I picked them on various colors of metallic elements to keep it from being boring and to also create a lot of visual interest at exactly the same time. So just find the parts that you want painted up and paint up the corresponding colors and then from there you're ready to move on to our very last effect which is a rust effect. Now for some of these beastmen, they're actually carrying some really hunking, huge pieces of jagged metal, which I thought looked really cool, but instead of actually making them look like polished pieces of metal, I thought it'd be more interesting if they look like these guys are carrying around rusted chunks of metal that he's using it to bash, slash, and crush people with. So for those pieces that I decided to use that, what I did is I painted it in that graveyard steel color, which is that 50-50 mixture of copper as well as uh, gun metal. And what I did is I dry brushed it real quick with a thin layer of ripe tomato by Apple Pearl Paint, cost it 50 cents. You could use Rise of Rust if you wanted to, to create that exact same effect. Effect, but Rise of Rust costs $7.80 a pot, and who really has time for that? Where you can create the exactly the same metallic effect with Rust just by dry brushing your metallic elements in orange. So now that we're done with the miniatures, the next thing we need to do now is to work on the bases. So we're going to go for kind of like this ash waste kind of look for the bases because, like I said before, I'm not really using these guys for kill team. I'm primarily using them for Necromunda. So because of what I decided to do is paint all the bases in one thin layer of pavement paint. Now, if you'll notice, the white undercoat is peeking through the white pa uh, the uh, pavement paint that we have on there. But that is perfectly fine because once we dry brush these miniatures on the bases, it's not really going to matter. And the reason why it's not going to matter is because I'm dry brushing the texturing on the bases with pale uh, pale gray by Folk Art. Once again, as you can see, you can't really see the white undercoat uh, peeking through the pavement paint. In fact, it probably adds to the overall ashy, dusty quality of these bases as well. And it looks absolutely fantastic too. So now that we're done with the dry brushing, the last thing we need to do now is to do an oil wash. So because it's a quick paint method, we're going to do a quick oil wash all over the miniatures in order to create that uh, overall look for our miniature as well. Now, usually when you do an oil wash in a quick paint method, a lot of the painters like using Army Painter Strong Tone. Uh, it's a wonderful product. That's exactly what it does is advertised. It creates a beautiful oil wash that gets and brings out all the details, also blends your color, does exactly what it does. The only problem, though, is that Army Painter Strong Tone costs $32 a can, so it's actually quite expensive. What I like to use instead is Minwax Poly Shade in Mission Oak. You can get this at your local Walmart for about $6.99. It's almost five times less than the actual Army Painter uh, Strong Tone, which is one of the reasons why I love using Midwax real quick. So what the oil wash does is a couple of things. The first thing that it does, of course, is it seeps directly into the recesses in the miniatures, bringing all that detail that we couldn't see earlier. So you can see the individual uh, strands of hair and fur these guys have, the musculature that they also have as well, all the details between the weapons panels of their weapons and armor as well. It brings a lot of those beautiful details, especially on the bases. It brings a lot of those granules of sand that we use 
on their bases as well. So that's the first thing that it does. The second thing it also does as well is it also smooths out the transitions between our base coats as well as our dry brushing. If you guys remember when we did our dry brushing, we had this kind of chalky kind of uh, uh, pastel texture going on for all of our miniatures, but that oil wash, what it does is smooths out that transition by blending the colors between our dry brushes as well as our base coats. And much has a much smoother transition and it looks much more organic and also more cohesive that way. And the third thing that the oil wash also does, it also darkens down the vibrancy of our colors. As you can see, that very bright red that we had earlier has been muted down much more almost to a crimson color as well. Same thing with all those earth tones that we use for the skin, it's pretty much muted down to darker shades, and that's exactly why you use such bright and colorful uh, paints in the beginning because I knew that the oil wash was going to mute down that vibrancy. So as you can see here, these guys look absolutely fantastic. And what we got to do now is let these guys dry and cure for 24 hours. And the reason why is because just like Army Painter Strong Tone, Midwax Poly Shade does have polyurethane in it. And when it does get done drying, it's going to take 24 hours for that polyurethane to cure. But when it does, you have a nice hard uh, coating on the outside of your miniature is going to protect it from fading as well as from being damaged as well. You do want to wait 24 hours for that stuff to uh, fully dry as well as cure because if you try to handle it while it's still kind of tacky you could ruin the finish on your miniature so we come back the very next day, 24 hours later, and of course the last thing we gotta do now is to base coat the rims of the bases. In this case, I used two thin coats of Skyline by Folk Art, and the reason why is because that's the color I use for all of the bases for all of our Nicaragua as well as Kilti miniatures, just because it's a color I like, and I feel like it gives kind of like an urban kind of wasteland vibe to those colors as well. So once you guys get done putting your two uh, thin layers, we gotta go with our very last optional step. Now this next step is optional. Uh, the reason why is because for me, I don't like that really candy coating high gloss finish that the Midwax Poly Shade actually uses on my miniatures. I like more of a subdued matte varnish on my miniatures. So because of what I decided to do is use a can of Krylon matte varnish spray. I can get this at my local Walmart for about $5.99. I just do a quick once over real quick with the matte varnish all over the miniatures to mute down the sheen of that uh, gloss from the uh, polyurethane. Now of course, you could obviously skip this step if you're a fan of that glossy look, but if you if you wanted to create the same kind of effect from Games Workshop, you'll need to buy a can of Minotaurian Varnish, runs at $19.50. And with all that being said, here is the end result that we looked at earlier. As you can see, we have a wonderfully painted kill team that looks really gritty, really, really violent. It's got a lot of rich colors going on inside of it, and it's got a beautiful tabletop standard, and it only costs us a little over $30 in order to do this, $33.62, to be perfectly honest. Now, when you combine that from, compare that with the materials that you need to buy from Games Workshop and Army Painter, you're talking about a grand total savings of $196. And on that subject, we're gonna talk about exactly what you need to purchase from both Citadel as well as Army Painter if you want to do exactly the same thing we did with our miniatures but using their products instead so we like to call this the citadel backslash army painter method which you'll need to buy as a can of corax white spray which is to cost you 17 dollars as well as the colors of thunderhawk blue bame blade brown vulcan green long beard caliban green luganeth orange as well as cyberite green all those colors costing you four dollars 55 cents per pot you also need to buy a pot of wildwood which costs seven dollars eight cents for that as well as bugman's glow cadian flesh tone baylor brown moot green slanesh gray eschen gray troll slayer orange flayed one flesh all those costing you four fifty five for those you'll need to buy a pot of talisar blue which could cost you seven dollars eighty cents for that as well as mephiston red xv88 and rakarth flesh which costs you four dollars fifty five cents for those colors you also need to buy a pot of Brass Scorpion, Lead Belcher, as well as Screaming Bell and Iron Breaker, which costs $7.80 for those. For your grays, you'll need to buy a pot of Rust Gray as well as Ultimon Gray, which costs you $4.55 for that. A pot of Aethermatic Blue for $7.80 for that color, as well as Retributor Armor, which costs you $7.80 for that color as well. If you want to do the Quick Paint Oil Wash method, you'll need to buy a pot of Army Painter Strong Tone, which costs you $32 for that color. And if you want to do a matte varnish, you'll need to buy a Minotaurian Varnish, which costs you $19.50. And if you want to use Astro Granite for your texturing, that's going to cost you $7.80 for that pot of technical paint. Now, assuming that you're buying everything for the very first time in order to paint up this kill team, you're talking about a grand total investment of $229.70 in order to buy the same materials from Citadel as well as Army Painter. When you combine compare that with our cheapskate method of only $33.62, you end up with a grand total savings of $196.08, which could probably buy you a starting box of miniatures for that price. Almost. Kind of depends on the game, I guess. 
So there you guys have it. This is how you guys can cheaply and quickly paint up a kill team of filler gore ravagers for Warhammer 40,000 kill team. Um, as always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is valuable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all these greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.